All right, everybody, here's the open source pellet burner 101. It's part of the C to Eco home. Here's our stove, the pellet stove, which is part of an overall system of energy that includes photovoltaics and a thermoelectric generator, as well as a biogas digester for generating gas for the cook stove. Here's the basics of a pellet burner system. You've got a pellet container, a pellet auger, a chute that goes into the pellet burner. Here's your stove and hydronics and chimney. As far as a little block diagram here, here's your auger, auger motor, feed tube, feed chute, the body of the pellet burner. There's a flame sensor in there, an igniter, a blower, and a double wall burn chamber. Here's some of this broken down for other examples. Another example. Here's how the package looks, the, the body of the burner itself. Now let's look at the technical design. Okay, so starting with the burner, the heart of it, so this basically displays all the parts necessary. Minimum, the minimum viable product, no surplus fluff, just the necessary parts. You need a blower for the air. You need an igniter for starting the flame if you're doing an automated system. You need a flame sensor to know when you have it ignited if you're doing that if you're doing ignition automatically. Here's the loading chute, the pellets go into the the burn chamber. Now here's the heart of the burn chamber. That's kind of the secret sauce here. It's a tube within a tube. It's got a grate where the pellets fall onto here. There are air holes on the bottom of this bottom to bottom of the tube and there's an annular surface of airspace within that tube so air goes in essentially through holes in the bottom that's the primary air now in the end of the tube there's also 10 more holes at the end of the tube the holes at the bottom basically get the blower air into fueling the providing the oxygen for burning the pellets as far as the auger itself you've got a flexible auger driven by a slow RPM motor with a motor coupler. This auger pumps up the pellets from some container. I didn't show the container here. The, pe the pellet container feeds through this T and then the pellets drop into the machine. Then the pellets drop into this chute right here. As far as the controller, main parts are on and off. So actually the design we're doing here, you got a, a control for the blower, for overheat sensor. In other words, 80 degrees or higher this thing turns off if you got some kind of a overheat condition you've got the eye the electronic eye which is the flame sensor wire you've got the igniter tube wire that's connected through our cat5 connector to the controller and another cat5 connector goes to the auger to run the auger motor the controller itself is an arduino it's got basically an on off switch 120 ac power a fan knob and an auger speed knob so those two you so you set the speed of the blower and auger to regulate the power output of the system now the automatic control you can also through the automatic control you can control how much power you're going to get as well but i think it's a good idea to run a basic system with auto ignition and then manually set the kind of speed um, the, set the power level so that once you get a hang of it, you can automate that, but at first to get that going through uh, manual control. As far as the design rationale for the overall system, a few points. We're using Cat5 wires to make easy connection to the, to the controller. A PVC flange mounts the motor to this it's a PVC tube with this auger. There's a T here and a flexible chute that shoots the pellets into the... Into the burn burner flexible auger the reason for that is is that it doesn't get stuck you're not going to jam the motor hole at the bottom of the tube here allows the pellets to come in as they travel up now the blower speed here determines combustion power together with the with the auger feed rate so the flame sensor it detects when the pellets are lit up upon startup so that the controller can turn off the igniter. Uh, up at the beginning, hot air is blown through the igniter by the blower to ignite the pellets. That's the, it's, I've seen that as the industry standard. There's a grate with grates pointing forward towards the left here so that the air coming in kind of goes, goes to the left. Uh, and the design I've seen on the internet is 
basically on the bottom of this inner tube is about 120 small holes 0.1 inch diameter so that altogether you have about one square inch of air inlet area at the bottom and then there's another 10 holes towards the end of the tube so you get kind of like secondary air to finish up the combustion there are 10 more holes each about 1 6 inch around the perimeter of the exit hole and there's another little stop grate here which prevents the pellets from falling out if you're blowing on them uh, the way this is self-cleaning for ashes is if you blow the blower faster you will clean out the ash from the system so there's a way for for ash to actually get blown out of this uh, slanted the grate I mentioned directs air towards the left um, the back of this combustion chamber here is is closed except for the holes providing air to the annular surface between the two two tubes most of the air goes into that annulus about 80 percent and then 20 percent goes into the main chamber through small holes at the bottom uh, under the grate and a little bit above the grate but the vast majority goes in such that it can feed the primary and secondary air in in the annular surface between the two tubes it's a basic design rationale overall here if you've got any questions or concerns or if any of this is incorrect please let me know we're open to learning here so controller logic controller as I mentioned it's got on off 120 AC power fan fan and auger speeds and then you're controlling the blower, the flame sensor, the igniter, also there's the overheat protector I didn't draw here and then the auger motor is controlled by the controller. So upon startup user turns the power on, igniter turns on, fan turns on, auger starts feeding the pellets when the flame sensor detects the flame igniter turns off. Now if there's a threshold of time reached and the pellets haven't ignited then we shut the machine down that means that there's some kind of a problem during normal operation stove power is adjusted by the user through the two knobs flame detection continues throughout if flame dies the machine shuts down because that means there's some kind of a problem okay and perhaps the most important part is the air delivery pattern uh, the fan blows from the back and there's the tube within a tube structure for the main main burner chamber there's a bunch of holes at the bottom uh, so this is a side view here that's the front view B bunch of holes at the bottom basically about seven inches long about 2.5 inches wide holes at the bottom of the tube so that the, you're feeding air from the bottom of the pellets to give them oxygen so they ignite um, and as I mentioned here 80 percent of air goes through inside space between inner and outer tube most of the holes are at the bottom to feed the bottom holes there's some at the top and the sides so that you're feeding the the holes that are at the end of the tube here these holes are would be the igniter holes below the grate there would be a grate sitting here where the pellets land on um, the igniter holes are right behind the igniter and then these two long holes here are above the grate so they provide air into the main combustion chamber but not a lot just a small fr fraction maybe five percent so that's basically the airflow pattern all the other details the bill of materials and so forth will be added to this document so stay tuned thank you